Oh, hi guys! Welcome to our Victory Greenhouse YouTube channel. Now, if this is your first time here, we're glad that you have joined us today. But if you're a returning viewer, welcome back! Now, if you are here, we hope that today's message will bless you, it'll encourage you, it'll speak life to you. But more than the message itself, we would like to encourage you to be part of our church community. And you can get connected through discipleship. And we want to invite you to be part of one of our victory groups. If you're interested, please do let us know. You can comment, you can message us, you can text us, whatever. Just let us know how you want to get connected so that we can plug you in. Now, as we get ready for today's message, we pray that the Lord will bless you as you listen to the sermon today. God bless you. One of the things that I want to share with you before we get into the Word of God today is a discovery of mine. How many of you are Instagram users? Raise your right hand. Okay, nalito po sila, no? Masyado pa maaga, no? For the right hand, no? So, sino ang may Instagram? Raise your hand. Okay. Uh, yung iba, Friendster lang. No, yung wala pa rin, no? So, yung iba siguro, ano pa rin, snail mail or email. You know, I discovered this feature only recently that you can actually now mute People, nakita niya ba yan? You can mute a story and a post. I like that because I believe Instagram has found a way for us not to unfollow people. Why? Because nobody likes that kind of rejection. So we just unmute or mute the story or the post of people that we follow. And I believe it's been beneficial for a lot of us because during this time of year, especially in this year, as elections is coming up, I know a lot of you are getting stressed with some of your friends. Yeah, that's the reality, no? Some of them are very passionate no, about probably their candidates and their views. And we live in a world where it's all about canceling people. What do we mean by canceling people? We reject them. Whenever we object their opinion, all we need to do is unfollow. But the reality of what Instagram created is they found a way for us to unfollow someone without trying to hurt them. Yun yung ginawa ni Instagram. But the reality of it is they may have found the feature of muting things, but they have not fix the problem of canceling people. Ganun pa din. No, we still live in a world where we cancel people, where once we object to their opinion, we immediately reject. You know, we live in a world where we can actually not meet eye to eye on things, but still be friends. I hope that we do not move in uh, this kind of spirit, no? that when people don't agree with your opinion, it's as if, you will cancel them in, in your life. You know, objections shouldn't lead to rejections. We should not cancel people only because they did something wrong. I will unfollow you, unfriend you. I want you to see this, no? the effect of that cancel culture. Social rejection, which is the byproduct of canceling, increases anger. Sino sa inyo yung mas galit lately? No? I believe your spouse knows that. Anxiety, depression, jealousy, and sadness. That's what social rejection does. And so, my question, who have you canceled lately? Yan. Meron ba kayo mga na-cancel lately? Is it a friend? Wala, wala naman, no? Hindi, ako lang ang ganun yata, no? Uh, we, there's that tendency that we cancel people. Whenever we say we cancel, what do we do? We automatically ignore, reject, and stop following. That's what can to cancel is, to reject. But I want to ask you this question, and I want you really to de think deep thoughts. And this is what we'll be talking about. If we are able to cancel people in our lives, maybe we have canceled Jesus as well. Maybe there are things that he teaches us, but we don't want to follow. We reject it. We say, it's not for me. Maybe it's too hard. We cancel it, we ignore it, and we stop following Jesus. Have we canceled Jesus lately? We're going to go through the word in Mark chapter 12 as we start this new series, a very short one, two-week series, entitled Stable and Sure. I believe these two words will reflect the life that we want in Christ. All of us want to have a stable life, a sure life, sigurado. 
No, regardless of what is happening. And as we go through this parable of Jesus, Jesus shares a parable in chapter 12 of Mark 1 to 12, we will see how a few people or how a select people tried to cancel Jesus. They rejected him for his message and what he came in for. As we read the word, no, I want you to read one and two together. We're going to read it. I'm going to read it out loud and then we will pray and allow the Spirit of God to really speak to you where you are. This is our message. As believers, as people of God, we want to be encouraged by the word, but not only that, for us to be able to be transformed, for us to be able to move in love. This is God's word today. Mark 12, verse 1. And he began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a pit for the wine press and built a tower and leased it to tenants and went into another country. When the season came, he sent servants to the tenants to get from them some fruits of the vine vineyard. Verse 3, And they took him and beat him and sent him away empty-handed. Again, he sent to them another servant, and they struck him on the head and treated him shamefully. And he sent another, and him they killed. And so, with many others, some they beat and some they killed. Verse 6, he had still one other, a beloved son. Finally, he sent him to them, saying, they will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and inherit. And the inheritance will be ours. Lord, speak to us today. Thank you, Lord, that as we talk about your word, Lord, you will reveal to us if there are things that we have rejected about Jesus, if there are things that we have pushed back, we have unfollowed, we have muted about Jesus. Lord, allow us to respond in coming and going back to his throne. Allow us to surrender our lives once again to Him as we discuss this word in Jesus' name. Amen. As we go through this parable, it talks about a man who invests in a vineyard. During the biblical times, this was a very common industry. They were wine producers. And that's why in marriages, in weddings, if you remember the first, what was the first miracle of Jesus? When He turned water into Pokari sweat, no? naging hydration, naging wine. Imagine that. no. And what else? As soon as he converted that water into wine, it was a grand feast. One of the guests said, you have saved the best no? for this wedding. And so uh, the industry of wine was very popular. Kumbaga ngayon, no? ito siguro yung mga, uh, what are the... On, in the, ngayon, online shopping, to, it was the industry that was da, driving the economy. It was a wine production industry. And so as Jesus was talking about this parable, they understood it. Alam nila to. It was common. They see it all around them. It's, uh, it's where they grew up in. Kitang kita nila that they produced grapes and wines. And so he began to speak to them and he said, A man planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a pit for the wine press and built a tower so that it could be guarded. And after creating the environment to start a business, verse 2, he leased it to the tenants rather and went into another country. He decided now to leave his country. When the season came, he sent servants to the tenant to get from, the, from them some of the fruits of the vineyard. I'd like to uh, take time here. No? So what happened? So after setting it up, he talks to the farmers in the area, the vine dressers. Sabi niya, I want you to take care. Let's partner. I will give you a percentage of all the harvest. Siguro, ano, in every 10 bottles that the wine I sell or barrels, I give you one. Ganun yun, no? And then, uh, in agreement to this, he will also provide to them yung expenses nila on a daily basis. Okay, until wala pa tayong harvest, I will give you a living expense. You can live here in the vineyard. So it was a good package. And the tenants would do that. It was common. It was a very common partnership. But you have to understand, for a wine press or a, a industry of wine, for it to produce the good kind of grapes, it actually takes five years. Matagal siya na time. 
It's a business that you start, but your yield will be five years after. And that's why it was also common for this investor to leave the country. Ganun talaga yung nangyayari, hindi niya pinabayaan. He needs to do some other business. And so he leaves the country, and now what? He sends a worker. Sabi niya, can you get some fruit? Why some fruit? He wanted to taste if the grapes are getting better. That was what's happening. You know? So this is a very common illustration for them as Jesus explains to them the parable. In verse 2, it says, uh, it says that they were as- he was asking for fruit. And what happens next? Verse 3, And they took him and beat him and sent him away empty-handed. Ginulpe. No? Di lang ginulpe. Sinipa. Sinuntok. Sabi, alis ka. You know, for the owner or the the owner of this business sabi niya siguro baka hindi sila naniwala na ako naka ako yung nagpag-send baka siguro ano akala nila ibang tao baka na scam sila alam niyo yon yung mga kakatok sa bahay ninyo ganun akala nila ganun siguro so what did he do verse 4 he now sends again another servant but the problem is they struck him on the head and treated him shamefully pinahiya pa Sabi niya, no, I represent Sir Joshua. No, uh, pinadala niya po ako. Hingi daw po kami ng konting grapes. Ah, grapes pala, ha? Ganun, si Ginulpe, sabi niya, ito, grape, pang, ganun. Mukha kang pasas, pang. Ganun. Pinahiya, no? Hindi ka mukhang ubas. And so now this guy probably goes back. As you know, a parable is a very short story. We don't see all the explanations. He goes back to his master and what happens next? And he sent another one, and this time they killed him. Parang mali na to. Murder na. Hindi lang binuli, murder pa. And so they, and so with many others, some they beat and some they killed. You know, if you think about it, if you are the, if you, as you hear this story, would you send someone to be killed and beaten? Ko ikaw no, parang. Teka lang, parang may mali na yata tong ano, yung may-ari ng business. Why would he send someone back? And ngayon, namamatay na yung mga servants niya, nauubos na sila. Think about it. Try to be in that story. What would you feel if Jesus was talking to you with this story? In verse 6, he says, And he had still one other, a beloved son. I heard one of the pastors preach this in the US. Sabi niya, no? Why will you send the beloved son? Why not the black sheep son? <laughs> but he was sending his favorite son. I am sending my beloved son. Finally, he sent him to them saying, This they will respect. Anak ko na to. Kamukhang kamukha ako na to. Eto na, ipapadala ko. And they took him and killed him. And threw him out of the vineyard. Why? Sabi nila, Pag ito pinatay natin, sa atin na tong vineyard na to. This will be ours. Mawawala na siya ng inhere. We can get this land for our own. Verse 9, first part. I'd like you to think about it. It says, what will the owner of the vineyard do? Take a moment. What would you do if it happened to your vineyard? Anong gagawin mo? When I was reading this, no, sabi ko, pupuntahan ko yun with an army, kukurutin ko hanggang mamatay. Yung talagang, pipigaan ko ng kalamansi yung sugat. What would you do to avenge the, the death of your son? In Matthew, there's a parallel verse of this. So Matthew wrote about this parable, and Mark also wrote about it. They probably listened to Jesus when he was doing this. And this is the response to the question, what would you do? Matthew 21, I didn't put it there, verse 41 said, They said to him, He will put those wretched to a miserable death and let out the vineyards to other tenants who will give him the fruits in their season. How many of you would do that? Naka-off yata yung mic ko kanina pa. Yeah, Leon, di ba? You would do that, no? Ako, in my, uh, in my nature as a person and someone who gets hurt, I would do that. We would avenge the killing of our uh, staff and son. 
Di tayo papayag. We want to avenge. We need justice. We will go back. And this is what the listeners were saying. We will do that. But guess what? The second part of verse 9. He will come and destroy the tenants and give them the vineyard to others. You know the hard truth about this parable, and that's why I like it. Because parables of Jesus in the different Gospels would actually lead to kingdom truth. It would allow us to have a spiritual eyes to see. And that's why not everyone understood the parable. He would explain it to the disciples. But there is one unique parable in the parable of Jesus. It was this. Do you want to know why? Because it was a direct attack to the leaders of the church. It was something that he wanted to obviously know that I'm talking about you. You have to understand in Matthew 11, he was talking to the scribes, the leaders, the priests. Sino to mga to? The people where God entrusted the church, the Israel people. And so this is what happened in verse 12. And they were seeking to arrest Jesus, but feared the people for they perceived that he had told the parable against them. And that's why if I was a scribe when they were listening to this, after nila sabihin na, dapat yan, patayin yung mga yan, you know what they realized? Wait lang, wait lang, parang kami pala yung pinag-uusapan. Tayo pala yung pinagri- pinariringgan ni Lord. It was us, not you. I mean, it was them, the scribes, the church leaders. You know, three things that we see here that Jesus got rejected by these people. And as you know, before I get into that, you have to understand the vine dressers were the leaders of the church that time. The man who invested in this story is God. He, he trusted the church to his people. And the servants that was killed is actually the prophets of the olden times. If you look at the Bible, you'll see that Isaiah, the prophet, was actually sewn in half. Imagine. <laughs> Hinati siya in two. Jeremiah was also was persecuted towards the end of his life. He was also killed, stoned to death, I believe. One of the, the I think it's Zechariah, who was also uh, split in half. And this is what Jesus was talking about. Ginawa niyo to sa mga servants ko, sabi ni Lord. You rejected them because they were there to help you. And as you know, the son in this story is Jesus. He was talking about his coming death. When this happened, this was Wednesday. This was Wednesday of the Holy Week. And two days after, he will be killed. And as we know, Sunday, he rises again. And so as we talk about this parable of rejecting the vineyard, the man, this is actually an illustration of how people of God, the caretakers of the people of God, the priests during that time, how they rejected God as we go through the story. Three things. I'm going to summarize it this way. Three things that they rejected about Jesus. Number one, they rejected God's purpose. What was their purpose? To take care of the people. They were in the image of God. So sabi ni Lord dito sa mga leaders na to, you know, the ones who are running the temple, the reason why you're here is to lead people back to me. That was their purpose. But what did they do? Instead of the purpose of God, they did their purpose. Mayayaman tong mga to nun. It was all about what they could get rather than what they needed to do. Second, they rejected God's plan, the direction of God. They wanted to do it on their own. Ang nangyari, naging ano sila, law compliance. Di ba? As, as you know, no? Israelites, the Israel people during that time, so had, they had so many laws that they needed to follow it line by line. So they rejected the plan of God and they also rejected the Son, the actual Son of God. But you know, more than the what, God, what they rejected of God, you know what's important for us to learn? It's the why they rejected God. Why they canceled Jesus. Why they canceled what He was 
sharing, and doing. And this is where we'll focus. Verse 10. It says, Have you not read the scripture? Jesus says. The scripture is quoting from Psalms 118, verse 22 to 24. It says, The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Verse 11. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. And now the story gets better. Because Jesus uh, now not only uses the illustration of a vine, vine, uh, huh? vine dresser, vine dresser, he now uses a, an illustration of a builder, isang mason, someone who builds a house, a building. So now he changes it. Sabi niya, no? Have you not read the scripture? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. A new image is painted by Jesus. A new parable. And so the question is, why did they reject Jesus? Why did they reject God? Because when we answer this question, we will be able to answer, have we rejected Jesus lately? The first thing is this. They were confused on who Jesus is. It says, the stone the builders rejected was actually the cornerstone. Later, we'll talk about what the cornerstone is. But they were confused. They thought that he was just a nobody, a regular person. You have to understand, in building a house, you would lay stones. Sabi nila, itong stone na to, si Jesus, wala to. Hindi natin kailangan to. We reject it. You know, they were confused on who Jesus really was. And I have to tell you, before I accepted Jesus, I thought Jesus was like this. I don't know if you will agree with me, no? Ako na-experience ito. Alam nyo dati, ang thinking ko, si Jesus, bro. Yeah. Brown, and dyan yan, si Jesus. You know, I know he's there for me. And so I consider Jesus as my best friend. Pag kailangan ko, nandyan si Lord. Totoo naman, di ba? When I need someone to talk to, when I'm alone, when I can't share my deepest, darkest secrets to the world, I have Jesus on my side. Why? He's my best friend. But I realized that having a best friend means I can do things and he will understand. Di ba ganun mga best friends? Sino nga may best friends sa inyong ganun? Yung kahit anong gawin nyo. Okay lang yan. Yung lahat, no? Pare, may problema ako. O, tara na, inom na tayo. Parang lagi kang excuse. Get? Ako lang yata talaga, Lord, ang may best friend ko. Parang, hindi ko alam. How many we can relate to that, no? Yung talagang walang iwanan. Alam niyo yung gano'n? Yung kahit anong problema. Yung laging mas malaki problema sa'yo, yung pare, alam mo kasi, ay, wala ka sa problema ng lolo ko. Parang, so, hindi mo alam if he's just making you feel better. I consider Jesus as my best friend. But you know the problem with that? Yes, Jesus can be your best friend, but he's not only that. I can trick my best friend. I will do crazy things with my best friend. And the problem with that mentality is we feel like Jesus will accept us for everything we've done. Why? Because he is my best friend. I was confused on who Jesus was. I had to realize that Jesus is not just my best friend. He is my Lord and Savior. And that it's up to him. It's not what I do. It's not what I share. But it's him leading me. He's everything. And that's why when you talk about the stone and the cornerstone, the question is, who's your foundation in your life? Is it Jesus as your best friend? Ang problem din sa best friend, no? Pag may best friend kayo, pag hindi kayo nagkasundo, ay, ayoko na, next, next year na tayo magkita. And then best friend pa rin kayo. Do you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we distance ourselves with our best friend. And ultimately, when we're with him, okay pa rin naman tayo. But you know, Jesus is more than a bro, a best friend. We need to know who he really is. They rejected him because they thought he was just a great teacher who could quote scripture. They rejected him because they thought parang medyo iba na to. Sinasabi niya, he's the son of God. But you know what? Once you encounter Jesus for who he really is, and I believe this is a journey of our Christian faith, once you unpack and discover that he's more than a friend, 
That's someone we can surrender our lives with. Once we understand that, once we truly know who Jesus really is, I want to say this, you will want to build your life on Him. Knowing who Jesus really is will want you to build a life in Him. It's not just an add-on best friend. He's a foundation of life. The way we do things, the way we live. Last Thursday, I had um, the opportunity to do one-to-one again to a friend in our victory group. Kami, no? Magkakasama kami. I did one-to-one. And as we talked about first chapter, no? Chapter one on salvation. We were talking about what God has done, the cross. And I came to realize that I was watching this guy who I did the one-to-one with. You know, I, I saw him mga, mga three times, bro. Para siyang nabuhusan ng malamig na tubig. Alam niyo, ba? Pati yung mic niya nagganon. No? Why is this very important? Kasi I saw a man who for the first time saw Jesus differently. You know, sometimes we assume, kilala ko na yan eh, si Jesus. Galing yan magsalita. He's a great storyteller. Galing yan. He's a healer. Galing yung mga miracles niya. But you know, knowing Jesus from afar is different from experiencing Him face to face, beside, within. And as I watched this person go through one to one, I realized I needed to hear that again. You know what our devotion does? More than encourage us, more than to give us a direction, it's actually to know who Jesus more is. And this is what we've been singing a while ago by Verhel. No, we're gonna sing that again later. That He is a God who we can actually build our lives on. The question is, do we know Jesus fully? The second thing on the why they they cancelled or rejected this Jesus is this. They were convinced that what they built is enough. These Pharisees, these guys, they think na okay naman to. I've built a life on my own. And you know what? We live in a world where this is the story that you can build your life on your own. Ang mundong tinitira natin always says this, Uy, fa-follow ko to because he is a self-made. Mayroon ba kayong kilalang ganon? Self-made. Parang siya lang ang mundo niya, no? How can you be self-made? Wala kang kausap? Wala kang ka-interact? Kung may negosyo? Paano yun? You know, we live in a world where we interact with people. And so self-made is, I believe, a false teaching of the world. How can you be self-made? Wala kang, hindi ka nag-aral? I don't want to be self-made. I'd rather be dependent on God than self-made. And some of us build our lives on this concept that oh, ganda na ng buhay na na-build ko. Matibay na to. Na pag may dumating na pagsubok, I can withstand trials. All of us are building our lives on our own. Sa totoo lang, no? With or without God, we have this concept of building our lives. We save, we invest, we buy things that we think will build our lives. But you know, the pandemic is the biggest realization that what we build can crumble anytime. Do you agree? In an instant, I've learned people lose their business, work, relationships, and even lives. Control is actually something that is not really there. I used to think that me working for whole sim no, during that time, several years ago, Sabi ko, wow, I'm in a secure company. Kahit ano mangyari, basta nandito lang ako. But you know, I've seen it, no? I've seen friends lose their jobs. nag date, nawala ng trabaho, and I see them parang nawala yung buhay nila. Why? Because they built their life on those things. Sad. You know, we are confronted by the opportunity to fix our foundations every time we open the Bible. It's an opportunity for us to build our foundation on God. You have to understand that a cornerstone, and I want to jump here, no? cornerstone, sabi niya, no? the stone was rejected, but he was the real cornerstone. What is a cornerstone? 
hindi na tayo ganito mag-build ngayon, but in the ancient times, especially in the bib- biblical times, they had to choose this best rock that would be installed as the very first rock. They call it the most critical stone. What did it do? It actually determines the direction of the house and the strength of the house. And that's why in verse 10, sabi dito, no, they thought Jesus was just a stone. But they were rejecting the corner stone. The one that dictates the strength of the house and the direction of the house. The one that dictates the direction of your life and the strength of your life. Jesus was the cornerstone. And the problem is they denied, canceled, and rejected this cornerstone. They thought that the life they lived was established. You know, I know, ayaw nyo namang i-reject si Lord. Nobody wants to do that. But for some reason, there's just this tension in our hearts that we eventually choose not God. Let me explain. I learned this term no, from Pastor Bojo. He says it's called cognitive dissonance. It's the mental discomfort that results from holding two conflict beliefs, values, or attitudes. When there are two conflicting beliefs, cognitive Cognitive dissonance is actually rejecting new information that conflicts with your existing belief. That even though alam mo mas maganda yun sa'yo dahil may binild ka na, kakapitan mo pa rin to. Hirap nung term, no? Pang Pastor Bojo lang talaga eh. No? Ano lang naman ako eh, kung ano anong lang term lang ako. No? But let me explain, no? And I was thinking, Lord, how can I illustrate that cogn- cognitive dissonance? And I've been preaching this for the past years. I used to smoke. No? And praise God, I don't anymore. He has taken this um, addiction out of me. It was one of the miracles that He has done in my life. So I stopped smoking last week. Tagal na. Labo eh. So years. No? And it's a great testimony that I can share sometime. But it's like that. No? When I was smoking, it doesn't matter what the picture in the carton box is. Ano yung picture doon? Yung itsura ng effect ng paninigarilyo. Guess what? It never stopped a smoker. Parang pag nag grabe to, nakaka-stress, pingi pang isa. Parang walang effect, no? Dumadami pa lalo, no? You know, as a smoker, I will tell you this. We know that it's wrong for us. <laughs> No smoker can tell you, ay, hindi, healthy to. Alam mo ba, pag niyosi mo to, makakatulog ka ba? <laughs> Walang ganun. It's that illusion that you feel good, you feel less stressed. I used to smoke a lot. And it's like that. Even though you know it's wrong for you. Even though the world is telling you, even though they put sin tax on it, kahit nine times yung presyo ng Yossi, anong nangyari? Tinitipid lang. Pero ganun pa din. Cognitive dissonance. Even though you know it's wrong, you will continue to do it. Why? Because you want to hold on to it. Okay. It makes me feel good. Ang daming ganyang situation for all of us. Maybe for you, it's scope. Or soft drinks. No, di, masama ito eh. Pero kita mo naman, shh, ang galing eh. Alam mo yun, yung bagay ito sa lechon eh, para pagsubo mo, sebo agad, parang kunin ka na nila, di mo alam, no? Parang, guess what? We all have our cognitive dissonance tensions in life. And so going back to my illustration of smoking, when I realized that it is only God who could actually make me stop smoking. It was one of those things na, bubuin ko na yung testimony, no? I, I believe we have time. It was one of those things in my life that I could not, when I would quit, di ba? I will quit, I will quit. Hindi na ako magsisigarilyo. I would crumple the box, I would throw it sa ano, gutter ng bahay, and then, nasan yung hagdan? Kahit lima buta, sisindihan mo, tapos I would quit for a week. What would happen? After a week, I will celebrate Galing ko, one week. <clears throat> you know, when I realized that I could not stop, 
because it was an addiction. I was in bondage to it. And I realized only Jesus can free me from my addiction. You know what I did? <clears throat> you want to know what I did? I prayed. Lord, if all the miracles in the Bible that you can free people from slavery, you can free me today. It was one of the most convincing prayers that I've said. The most heartfelt I was in faith. Lord, di ko kaya to. It was in my desperation that God freed me from it. The next day, I woke up with so much cough. Nakala ko mamamatay na ako. No? Kung COVID season yun, nako. Quinarantine yun na ako. Yung di ako makasal. I was coughing and coughing the whole day. And guess what? At night, I developed an allergy from smoke. Pag merong nagyosi, nangangati ako. Pero the day after, I never felt yung sinasabi nilang cold turkey, cold cuts, cold chicken, cold drink. Walang ganun. Addiction free. And I've never smelled, touched, or held a stick ever since that day. Praise God, no? What happened? You know, tensions in life, the struggle, the pull and shift, of what is good and what is bad and what to do. You know, once you are convinced that Jesus is what you need in your life, you will let go of everything. Once you are fully convinced that God can intervene in your life, you will let go of that tension. So, wala na yun. God can complete you. Once the world, no, the ways of the world is different now in your way of thinking. Romans 12 verse 2, I said this last week. No, do not be conformed by the, the do not be conformed by the patterns of this world by, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. There's that renewal that happens, transformation, and with that, you will know. Mas gusto ko si Lord. You know, without God in your life, I was talking about the cornerstone that sets direction. We will have a wrong direction in life. Ito yung pinakamasaklap, no? Imagine this. You're a builder. You start building. And then you lay it down. As a builder, you look at it carefully, right? Build, build, build. No? And then when you step back from afar and look at it, the worst thing that you can see is, shucks, baliku pala yung bahay na binild ko. And you know, sometimes we need to step back and see if our lives are really built the right way. You're familiar with the Leaning Tower of Pisa, right? That they've spent millions and millions just to try to maintain it. Why? Because eventually it goes, goes down. Instead of spending so much in rebuilding, why not start now? Build the right foundation. I want to say this. Only Jesus is a sure foundation in our lives. Going back to my illustration on cognitive something, dissonance. You know, the reason why sometimes we don't want Jesus to intervene is because when God steps in our lives, we know that He will unearth the foundation. Ano ang, asan ang foundation ng bahay? Nasa? Paa, di ba? Nasa ilalim. Hinuhu kay yan, no? And that's why whenever you see construction sites, especially yung malls, buildings, meron niyang board up. Ang ganda nung tarp, di ba? Soon to rise, nakalagay, di ba? Pero when you see, what do you see? Mud? Dirt? You know, found, building foundations takes time. And it's dirty. When you invite Jesus in your life, there are things that He will remove so that we can have a stronger foundation. I know it's painful. May pinapakita si Lord <laughs> Whenever we read the Bible, it's foundation building. Why? Because he's actually removing the wrong things that are there. The question is, are you willing to build your foundation in Christ? Because as a pastor, ito yung pinakaayo ko, that you've built something not aligned to his will. Challenges will crumble your foundation. Ayaw ko mangyari sa inyo. You remember the parable of the sower? That if you sow in the yung shallow ground, what happens? It will crumble. 
I'd like you to think about that when you get home later. Is my life built on Christ? Do I have a strong foundation in my life? So the second point is this, only Jesus is a sure foundation in our lives. And the third thing, that the reason why they rejected Jesus is this, control of their life is something they cannot turn over. Gusto nila si Jesus nandyan lang. Hihimasin lang pag may kailangan three times. Lord, kailangan kita. Parang genie. Yeah. They wanted God far enough so that they can do their own thing and they wanted God to be close enough when they need something. And this is funny because we are no different from the leaders of the church then. Minsan, ganun din tayo. No? Sino siya ganun din tulad ko? Thank you, Lord. Lima na kami. Di ba? But God is not yet done with all of us. He can still renew us and transform us. So they were uh, in a position that they did not trust Jesus. Kaya nga, they would always test Jesus, di ba? Sabi nila, okay, sige, Jesus, si John the Baptist ba? Uh, ganito ba siya? No? Was he baptizing in the authority of God or just man? So mga trick question yung gusto nila. Even yung tax, remember that, yung coin? They were testing Jesus all the time. Why? Because they want to trust only people that they have tested. Ganun ang way ng mundo, di ba? To see is to believe. To see is to believe, meaning we need proof first. This is the way of the world. And this is why they were like this kay Lord. Pag nakikita si Jesus, sige nga, ano ko nga. Tapos after niyang gawin, ay ah, hindi, ano lang yan. Sigo, nung nagpa-bless siya ng maraming bread, you remember that? May, meron siyang ilang gardinya. May dalawang gardinya, tsaka dalawang Spanish sardines, di ba? So, dumami yun. So, nung nakita, ay hindi, ano lang yan. Siguro, hinati yung tinapay ng maliliit. Tapos, dinaan sa tubig. Parang, alam mo yung nega ka lang. Meron ba kayong kilalang gano'n? Yung lahat ng magandang nangyari. Grabe, praise God, hindi si God yan. Meron ba kayong kilalang? Sana hindi nyo katabi, di ba? They wanted to trust God, and that's why they scrutinized God. They wanted to test God. They wanted to check if He's reliable. But at the end of the day, it will not work. Because faith is not about seeing first. How many of you love uh, shopping in Lazada, Shopee? Yeah. Liars go to hell. Pag hindi kayo nang... Yeah. Oh, di ba? Di ba? Tayo, di ba? Dami. Shopee. Shopee, parang nakakatuwa yung tunag. Shopee, Baga, pero butas na yung bulsa mo. No? Anyway, you know, whenever we shop, how many of you are just like me? The first thing we look at is the number of sales. Yeah. Meron? Oy, 3,000 sales. Ayos. Check. Oh, ano next? Reviews with pictures. Five stars. Uh, Ayan. Yeah. Okay. Parang yung nag-review, yung may-ari. Parang gano'n yung dating, you know? Niloloko yata tayo nito. No? Oh, what's the next we look at? Negative reviews. One star. No? Packaging. One star. Judgmental naman itong buyer na to. No? Parang involved na involved ka sa Shopee, you know? But how many of you have checked all of that, pero when you get the item, you were so disappointed? Yeah, be honest. Yeah, Lord, ito yung mga na-scam. Okay. Yeah, ako rin, mas ka. Uh, gets niyo ba yung sinasaya ko? Para naman may kausap ako dito. Hirap to ah, yung ginagawa ko ah. I've experienced that. I'm sure you've experienced that, Abby. Achi Orange, na-experience mo na siguro yan. No? Yung na-denggoy ka. I wanna say this, and this is funny. You know, even with the world trying to prove that we need to trust that person, that seller, we trust. But why is it that we can't trust God with our lives? Dahil ba wala siyang five stars? Dahil ba lahat hindi nag-follow sa kanya? Dahil ba we are a minority compared to more people in this nation? Why is it that we try to we trust people who'd actually trick us? But we can't even trust a God who really wants the best for us. I actually got bothered with my statement. Lord, can I really trust you 
with all my life? I want to encourage you with this word, no? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. You know, in the kingdom of God, it's not seeing first to believe. It starts by believing first, and then you will see. Iba ang way of thinking sa kingdom ni Lord. We cannot use the standards of the world. Hindi kasi shapi si Lord eh. The only way we can have a strong faith is when we fully can trust Jesus with all our lives without asking for a proof. You want to know why? Because the word trust, full trust, actually also means faith. That's why they rejected Jesus. They wanted him to show them first. Show me the money first before I will buy into that business. Show me that you can heal me first and then I will follow you. Lord, show me that you will give me that promotion and then I will commit my life to you. Guess what? What Jesus is telling you is, trust me first and then you will see. Sobrang lacking difference. Have we rejected Jesus because of the way he does things? In God, most of the time, the proof comes after the trust. Psalms 40 verse 4. The message version says, Blessed are those who give yourselves over to God. And I'd like you to take note of this. Turn your backs on the world's sure thing. Ignore what the world worships. You want to be blessed this 2022? It starts with trusting God. Grabe si Lord. Kasi isa lang hinihingi niya sa atin. Buti na lang, no? Blessed are those who do this and that. Simple instruction from the Lord. Blessed are those who have faith in me. This is what he was saying. Blessed are those who fully trust me. And what is the tension? The world will tell you there are surer things than Jesus. Don't follow that. Wow. You want to live a blessed life? You want to live a stable and sure life? That even though there are storms again, kung Omicron, Pomicron, lahat ng cron, dumating, but your life will not be shaken? Do you want that kind of life? Yes or no? Yes. Trust God. Fully. Surrender your life to Him. And I want to say this, a stable and sure life starts with total trust and surrender in Jesus. It really starts with faith. And this is what we talk about every week, to build your faith, but it does not stop there. You can build your faith daily in the Word of God. Again, I'm going to go back now. Mark 12, when Jesus was teaching this, this parable, He says in verse 11, this was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. What was He saying? He says that, yes, I know you will reject me. This is really my mission. And he knew that he would die two days later, by Friday of Holy Week. He knew his faith, and he knew he would rise again. And how sure he was of the things that will happen in his life is how sure he is that you can trust him. It starts with fully trusting God. Last Saturday, with our first part of Victory Weekend, we have a few Victory Weekend participants who are here today. Palakpakan natin sila, no? Victory Weekend is our retreat, no? Our foundational uh, week. And I was able to teach the topic on the cross. And when you look at the cross, you will see today, no? When you look at an empty cross, we just see do you want to know why we don't have a cross with Jesus on it? Because we know Jesus has risen again. No? But other than that, the reason why I wanted to share the cross is that all the rejections in life was because of the cross Jesus accepted us. Let me say that again. You know, we live in a world where the reason why we also reject others, we cancel others, because we have been canceled as well. 
Kahit hindi sa social media. All of us have felt this. Rejected, unloved, unworthy. I was asking this guy sa Victory Weekend, sabi ko sa kanila, if God would pay a price for your life, how much would it be? Because when I was a young believer, before I went to Victory Weekend, I remember that I priced myself as 50 off, less 20 plus cashback. Why? I didn't feel uh, like someone to be bought by God. For me, no, parang, Lord, damaged goods na ako eh. Drug, drug na ako eh. Wala na to. Pero sige, bilin mo na lang din, just in case. Kahit, sige, 90 off na lang, basta bilin mo lang ako. That's how I saw myself. Why? I felt the rejection because I did not perform, because I'm a sinner, I've done this and that. But you know, God purchased me full price. Full price without any discount, without waiting for 12-12 to happen. He purchased me full price. You want to know why? Because the world we live in will reject you, but God will accept you. The reason why I'm saying this is, imagine, no? Jesus was the most rejected person at that time. The people, as he came in, were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna in the eyes. After two days, three days, alam mo sabi nila, papako nyo na yan. Di namin type yung king na yan. Crucify him. The most rejected person to come on earth, the son of God, is one who can accept us for who we are. I'm gonna end with this. You know, we may have canceled Jesus one way or the other. We may have canceled him, unfollowed him, pushed him back from our lives. But I want to invite you, it's not too late to go back and build our foundation in Jesus. He is waiting for you. He is waiting you to go back. He is waiting for you to journey with him. I'm going to say that again. It's not yet too late to build your life's foundation in Jesus. Do you know when it starts? It starts now. I'm going to ask the worship team to sing. We're going to pray for you guys. We're not in a hurry. Let's enjoy time with the Lord. But as we sing this song, this is my request. Can I ask everyone to stand up? My request is, allow God to speak to you. Ito, tanong nyo kay Lord. Lord, ano pa bang mali sa foundation ng buhay ko? That's a good question. Another question that you can ask is, Lord, ikaw ba ang foundation ng buhay ko? If not, invite God. Receive Him once again. Ask Him, Lord, let's do this. Reveal to me the things that I don't, that I really don't need in life. Fix me, Lord. Fix me because I want to live a blessed life. I don't want to be shaken by challenges. And so, Lord, today, we want a life that is stable and sure. Fix me, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship God. Who you are is who you are. Who you are will always will be. Come on, sing this church. Seated in the highest, the unshakable. Nations, nations rise and nations fall. You're never failing, Lord. Your creation shouts to sing the unshakable king. Oh, who you are is who you are. Who you are will always will be. Seated. Nations rise.
from the top of your lungs. Seated in the highest place. The unshakable king. Nations rise, nations fall. You're unfailing through Shouts and sing the unshakable King. Amen. You know, while Pastor Francis was preaching earlier, uh, I was uh, reminded because maybe some of us, the reason why we are here or the reason why we are watching online in this uh, service, no? So at some point, yun nga, we felt like we rejected God. We rejected Jesus in our lives. And meron lang tayong uh, initiatives or tension na, ay, kailangan kong bumawi kay God. Kailangan kong bumawi kay Jesus. Kaya ako to gagawin. Or kaya ako siya, uh, may checklist tayo. Kaya natin siya dapat gawin. Or dapat may mga magawa tayo. But the, the reality is, it's, not, it's no longer yung initiatives natin. Eh, yung dapat, ano natin, yung i-prioritize or yung gawin. Kasi Jesus already won the victory for us. And the reason why uh, we get parang mixed up or confused about that, or the reason why we need to parang bumawi yung ganun mindset, kasi sometimes we feel it to other people, eh, or sometimes we experience that kind of, uy, may kasalanan ako, sige, babawi ako sa'yo, ganyan. And that na-apply natin kay Lord. But the truth is, intimacy or relationship with Christ is not something that we attain or paghihirapan or we work on. But it's already a truth that we need to live in. The, live, we need, the truth na kailangan natin panghawakan, the truth that we need to stand on our foundation. And I hope and I pray that as we worship and pray today, that i-declare natin yon. na it's not about our efforts, but it's, it's what Jesus has what already did for us, yung ginawa niya para sa atin. So, Lord, thank you for that powerful message, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that, Lord, it's not our efforts, our initiatives that will give us, Lord, strong foundation. But, Lord, it's our relationship with you. And, Lord, I pray for everyone who's here, even those, Lord, yung mga ganun ni mga naisip, just like me, Lord, kailang bumawi sa'yo. Lord, I pray that you will break that mindset. Because yung katotohanan, Lord, is we are already victorious in you. And we are already loved and accepted by you. All we need to do is to live doon sa katotohanan na yun. So Lord, thank you. I pray that we would experience your love today. And as we even, Lord, go back to our homes, our places, even tomorrow sa work, sa school, or in everything that we do, Lord, I pray that Yun yung mangingibabaw, Lord, sa minds namin, Lord. Even in our hearts, Lord. That you, are, you will be our foundation, Lord. You are our foundation. It's no longer us, Lord, but it's you. So thank you, Lord. Bless your people, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Ayun, sobrang nakarelated talaga ako kay Nina. And, you know, it's so hard to put our faith in something that we don't know or we're not aware of, or yung parang walang assurance. Pero ito yung promise na binibigay sa atin ni Lord, na as we put our faith in, in Him, as we humble ourselves before Him, and to really surrender our lives to Him, this is His promise. It's His promise of redemption, of restoration. So kung ano man yung hold, you know, hold mo sa life mo na parang, alam, 
you know for yourself that it's already destroying you i pray and declare and rebuke that it will just be broken right now that that bondage will just really break today it will just be a start it will be a beginning of a life created by god that is so true that is so good and i promise you this is the promise of god for all of you guys na it's really a life a victorious life so lord i pray lord as we humble ourselves before you O oh god and surrender our lives to you O oh god thank you lord because you are you are already assured us O oh god of your salvation O oh god that as we surrender our lives to you that the blood of Jesus is already covering us, O oh God, that you already atoned, O oh God, the many sins that we've committed in the past and even the, the sins that we'll commit in the future, you've already covered that, O oh God. So thank you, O oh God, for that life of redemption, of restoration, O oh God. Give us, Lord, that comfort, O oh God, and assurance, O oh God, that forever, O oh God, that you will just be there for us, Lord. So I pray, Lord, that we will continuously abide in your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's give God praise. All right. Last, no, before we end, I'd like you to close your eyes. Now, I'd like you to imagine your life fully trusting God. I'd like you to imagine your life with a foundation in the Lord. And I believe the Lord is giving you that picture of a life in a cornerstone on Him. In the right direction, built to last. Lord, thank you for that picture. I'd like you to look up. Today, we are sending you out to live that kind of life. Because if you have that life, imagine how many people will be blessed because of you. Amen? And I believe our Christian faith is not just for us. It will affect the families we have. It will affect our offices, our, our businesses, our friends, and even how we react in social media. Continue to trust God with your life. Amen? Lord, I pray that as we send out your people, Lord, allow them to be a blessing to the people around them. Thank you, Lord God, that they will hold on to your word. Thank you, Lord God, that as they fix their eyes and their thoughts on you, you will transform their minds. Lord, you will allow them to live a life that is in the right path, that cannot be shaken by this world. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you all. Be a blessing to your family and friends. See you next week.